Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. We're going to try to lay down Sadie today. Sadie is my youngster. She is Eve's daughter. Eve is over here on the other side of the arena. Years ago, I trained Eve to lay down. I used some of the principles I learned from Ken McNabb. Today, we're going to try to use some principles that we learned from a couple of horsemen trainers who did some short videos on uh, that we found on Google. Um, and we're going to review the principles as we go. Uh, why do I want to lay Sadie down? Years ago when I laid Eve down, I did it because I wanted to see if I could. And Eve is a very, uh, has a very good disposition and it took a lot of sessions, but I finally was able to lay her down consistently. Sadie, uh, there's a reason I want to lay her down. She's a youngster. She uh, tends to make it hard to lift the back leg. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, sometimes when we want to clean out the hooves, she tends to be bitey. Uh, we have recently shown you how she reacts to feeling uh, lariat straps, ropes on the back uh, uh, of her legs, in the back, close down to the hoof. We need to get rid of those bad behaviors. And one way, according to these two trainers anyway, is to get them in a submissive position and then train them to get rid of those bad behaviors. So, submissive in the horse world is lay down. If the horse is laying down after a fight between two horses, the one that's laying down can no longer flee. That horse becomes submissive. So, uh, we're going to try it. We're, first, we're going to see how, how hard it is going to be. We're using the principles of using a 12-foot uh, yacht rope lead line on a rope halter and a 22-foot yacht rope, we'll call it barrel line, that has a loop around Sadie's left front. And the loop is with a metal ring so that if we get into trouble, it's more likely to be more easily removed. According to this first trainer, um, what you want to do is uh, pull the lead line to flex the head on the right with a hand pull on the left. Okay, so watch Katie do that. Now his horse was very responsive, but you could probably guess that it wasn't the first time his horse had done it. Okay, now can we get her to flex her head and still stand there? Yes, we can. Okay, and then we want to, with the belly rope, pull up on the left front hoof, like that. Ah, and then the horse starts to get wobbly and feel trapped. And that's when the problems can happen. So let's see, let's see what Sadie says. Now this fellow did it all by himself. I'll intervene if I think I can help. Will, will Sadie say, oh gosh, I guess I better put my knee down. I guess I better lay down. She's putting her head down, that's a good sign. He got that flexion to this side, to the right. That made a big difference in his horse. Nah, she's not gonna let us do that. And this can be very dangerous, so we're gonna tread very lightly, very tiny baby steps. I did it with Eve, I had a Sir Single on. But neither of these two trainers use Sir Singles. One of them just used the head rope. The other used the head rope and the belly rope. So we're starting with the head rope and the belly rope. We're gonna see if Sadie gets the idea. I like that she's putting her head down. She kind of getting the idea that that means something about down. Now I could go there and try to pull that lead line to get that flexion because she's not flexing to the right. 
This was a five minute video that we found on the internet. I believe it's YouTube, laying your horse down. I'm not sure, but I think the trainer's name was Dennis Falk. wondering we have oh oh that the kind of posture I saw on the video but boy is that scary <laughs> Katie come on over here for a minute tell me what you're thinking and feeling because Katie uh, watched the video too as a matter of fact I think she found this video um, I think she's trying to figure it out she's still licking her lips um, I don't think we're stressing her out too much one of the videos I watched, they said it takes more than 10 minutes, stop and try it again another day. So I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. But let me review before we try again. Uh, the notes that I took when I watched this video it was a horsecity.com video, which used to be on RFD TV. Uh, you want to get them to be soft and submissive, but not scared. You put the rope on the left front hoof and then the rope over the barrel, which we did, and we're using the right, the correct kinds of ropes, the safest kinds of ropes. We're using the rope halter on the head with a lead, a 12 foot line. I feel that that's the right choice. With the left hand, hold up the foot, which Katie did. With the lead line, pull to, uh, to flex the head on the right with a left hand pull. And that's what we're not getting, the combination of the leg up and the, uh, flex to the right. I think if the pole was more from the side and not underneath. Ah, halter. like maybe the Monty Roberts halter. Monty Roberts or just a, um, a uh, nylon one. Okay, okay a flat halter. Okay, so Katie's saying if we would just pull from this side, we'd probably get the flexion more easily. Now, Monty Roberts has a uh, flat nylon halter that also has the rope uh, cues across the nose. So I feel we should use that next time. Next time, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, with your repetition, add more feel from the handler. It's a timing thing. So Katie's the handler, and she's getting the feel, but we're trying to do it in tiny baby steps. See, some, some people tend to turn, flex the head towards the hoop that's up. This fellow on horsecity.com did not flex the head toward the handler. Okay, all right, just uh, wait, wait a minute. Let me read a couple more points about this one. Uh, then he went on to describe what the horse feels when they're down. It's a really a submissive feeling. It can be a scary feeling for the horse if they feel they're being threatened. But if they're just being soft and supple, and they go down and we, we give them a carrot, we pet them, we praise them, we remove the pressure, then it won't be a scary feeling and they'll want to do it for you because you're asking. Now, the, the uh, Rick Gore seven minute video, he didn't even use a barrel rope. He uh, used only the halter and he, uh, he first got the horse to bow. Let's take the barrel rope off. Now watch how she removes it. Now I could tell that his horse had bowed before for him, but let's see what happens. He took the, uh, he bent the left front and the horse kind of did a bow as a result. Let's see if Katie feels comfortable doing it you understand what he did? Did you watch that one, Katie? Yeah. Yeah. I know. His horse was trained. Yes, yes. His horse was willing to do it because he, uh, Rick was asking that horse to do it, and it had done it before, and it wasn't scared to do it. Now, I have seen horses uh, sit on, on their, their butts, and I wonder, how does the trainer train them to do that? I could see something like this, and once they go down, they're not scared. They said, oh, this isn't so hard. 
Okay, he, uh, didn't he stand on the side and pull that leg back? Flex the leg. We'll, we'll watch a bit. Yeah, flex the leg. Stand on the side. Yeah, and pull it back. That's it. That's it. But she's resisting, isn't she? She's not being soft. I like the fact, though, that her head's going down. How does she feel? Real tight? Stressed? I don't think she's stressed. Okay, um, but that's kind of a dangerous thing to do yeah. to be right there. Okay. He said he gives carrots. He always has carrots in his pocket. We don't today, but we will next time. And then once he got his horse down, he laid down with the horse because he wanted the horse to see that this is a togetherness thing. It's not something you have to be afraid of. Uh, he said some people would say that that's a dangerous thing for him to do, but he felt that he trusted his horse enough and the rewards uh, toward the training objective were so good that it, he said, I don't mind laying down next to my horse. As a matter of fact, he went under the horse. And uh, then the horse decided to uh, step forward and just lifted his back legs over uh, Rick. And uh, I'm not sure every horse would do that, but I have to tell you that uh, once my third Morgan, Semi, um, decided she wanted to go that way, and I was leading her this way, and uh, I slipped and fell, and she, in fact, went that way, but she could have stepped on me and she didn't. Uh, I'm not to this day sure whether or not she on purpose stepped over me. Because I have had experiences with my other Morgan Semi, when uh, other people have been in here asking her to do something, and she was scared, and she was running around the perimeter of the fence, when she saw me come close to the arena fence, she slowed down, stopped, and came over to me. So there was most, there was most definitely a, a partnership between her and me. So according to Rick, if you remove the fear and the stress, uh, you will be able to accomplish this uh, objective. He spoke very uh, poorly about people who stall up their horses and said that he thinks that horses need to have variety, need to be able to move, need to be able to play with each other. He even spoke negatively of full imprinting, that it's being done too much, that the horses themselves tell each other what the right thing is to do in the horse world. So, uh, we've tried it with Sadie. Now we're gonna stop and we're gonna bring Eve in. Like I said, I've trained her to do it in the past, but it was years ago. Let's see what she does about all of these maneuvers. And then on our next session, we'll go on. Eve with her belly rope on. And her rope halter on with the same lead lines. Okay. Is she any easier to pick it up? No. No? Okay. Now, can we get Eve to flex to this side at the same moment that you have her leg up? And then let's see how she responds. I. When I trained her years ago, it was kind of this way, but like I said, I had her sursing a lot. Good. No. Using an arm extension. I hate it when they're jumping around like that, hopping around. I don't really believe in hobbles, but I'll tell you that if a horse gets used to being hobbled, if they then get a chain or a wire around their legs, they're more likely not to get in trouble by feeling trapped if they know that trapped feeling and aren't afraid of it. Ooh, look, look, ooh. 
tired. I think she's going to Yeah, okay. Okay, let's, let's let her down. Yeah, she, yeah, and, and it's dangerous. We don't want her falling into the fence. My thoughts are maybe we'll put that lead line on the knot on her right side of her head. And let's see if we can get that flexion. And I'm wondering if I should be there to pull the head. And on the other know. side? Yeah, right. Let's see. So I'm going to come on to her right side, see if I can get the flexion on her head to the right. She's just trying to follow me. So let's let's go back to plan A. We've got the quick release on the right side of her rope halter. We're away from the fences. So if she does fall down or go down, she's not likely to fall into a fence or a panel. Try to use my crop to get that flexion. No way. I think, if I recall, the reason I used a sur single is I went through a loop or a handle of the sur single to get that flexion. You see how hard it is to get the flexion yeah. without any kind of extra training tack on. Uh, however, it is recommended not to use anything with a horn. Uh, if they go down, pardon me? Or stirrups. Or stirrups, right, because if they do go down, they can hurt themselves very badly by going down on those pieces of tack. Do you remember if this is how she reacted last time? Oh yeah, it took me many a session last time. Katie asked me, how did she react this way? Yes, I recall it took me many a session I just patiently, with repetition, tried over and over and over again, and finally she did it for me, and then it wasn't hard to get her to do it again because she realized that she, it wasn't scary and she was just being submissive. But we wanted to try it on Eve the very same day we tried it on Sadie so we could compare their reactions. See, what she's going to do now is hop, or she may say, oh, God, this is tiring. I'm just going to lay down. Let's see what she does. We should have done it maybe a little longer with Sadie and maybe a little longer with Eve this trip around, you know, on this session, maybe, maybe 10 minutes for each, but uh, we're doing it about five minutes for each. And we'll do it again, and we'll show you our progress. Can you shorten that lead line? Yeah, to try to get that angle. Yes, like that. Usually Eve is pretty good about side flexion. One rein stops and so forth. Uh, you see that if we had a steer single on without a horn, without stirrup, and we went through a loop on the other side, we'd get that uh, pressure on uh, to get her, we think to go to the right with her head like that, but a, lo a whole lot more. We want a whole lot more flexion to the right than what you just now yeah. see. Okay, so next time, uh, we'll watch the videos again, make sure that we aren't making any mistakes, and we'll uh, put at least a, a flat sur single on with no stirrups, no handles, and uh, try it again, probably with both horses, and with repetition and the right timing by the handler and the right understanding by 
both horses, mother and daughter, I believe we'll get them to lay down and we'll show you. Here's our next session. We've got Eve here on the west side of the arena. I've got the Monty Roberts Dooley halter on, which gives me a double-stranded nylon over her nose. I've got Angela behind me with our nifty training flag, which we hope will convince Eve, either visually or with sound, not to step forward. I've got the 22-foot yacht rope lead line wrapped around her left front foot down at the hoof. I'm trying to ask her, by using a surcingle ring, to keep this flexion in her neck. I've got this 22-foot yacht rope line around her belly. Let's see if I can get her hoof up. Ah. Whoop, whoop. Keep that flexion. Okay, here comes the knee. This is a timing problem, but it could be potentially dangerous. Yeah, she's not understanding. I've got that flexion with the help of the sur single. Ah. Lift up. Keep this line out from under her feet if she does start dancing around. Got that flexion, which we were having trouble getting the other day and still getting her to stand still. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna try something different. I'm not getting it. I feel, can you hold this? Keep, try to keep her flexed. I'm gonna try something that doesn't use her barrel, but uses the sur single. I've got her left front uh, at the hoof. I've got the ring on the yacht rope. Okay, I'm going to try to put this yacht rope here on this side. This is a carabiner that's on the ring of the sur single. See if I can get some leverage to ask her to lift her foot without involving her barrel, which may be a little bit confusing to her. So I'm going from ah in the uh, horse side to out, in which case I don't really need a 22 foot line. Next time we'll probably use a shorter line so it doesn't tend to fall at your feet or her feet. I'm making some loops in my left hand so that if she does pull away, it's not gonna tighten on my hand. Well, you hold on to that. Okay. And with the, with the training uh, flag, see if you can keep her from moving. I will too. I'm, now I'm going to leverage. Up. Ah. Up. Up. I'm going to try to give her a cue. Up. Up. She feels the pressure on her leg, but see, she doesn't understand. Yes. Ooh, nice. Good girl, Eve. Good girl, Eve. I'm going to let loose of the pressure ever so slightly. If she understands what I want, she'll go down. She did years ago. She'll go down for me, lay down. She doesn't want to stay down long, as I do understand that they feel uh, like they can't flee. It's not natural for them to go down. But if you have a reason why you want to train a horse to go down, let's say you can't get up in the saddle unless they go down, or let's say you have a behavior problem that you'd like to solve by getting the horse to understand that they must submit to you, this is a good way to do it. And we saw this happen at the horseman's reunion in Paso Robles a couple weeks ago when they were training colts. One in particular needed to be more submissive, so the cowboy got that horse down. Good girl. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this now, and you loosen the head. We're going to walk to the middle of the arena. And why? If she does go down, I don't want her hitting that. Uh, can you get it over her neck mm -hmm. for now? Okay, and just hold her at the, yeah, hold her here closer to her okay. bridle. Let's uh, carefully walk her to the middle of the arena. Up. Step up. Good, she's okay on that. She's got that feeling around her ankle, which I'm glad she's not spooking by. 
Let's go all the way around. I'd like this side of her to be in the camera's view. And turn, yeah, turn and stop. Whoa. See if you can get that flexion by what you need to put. I think you need to put the lead line back over her neck. <laughs> oh, she's bringing that, that uh, left front up quite readily now. And if my cameraman can kind of zoom in to how all these ropes are attached. Ooh, she's going up again. She wanted to put her foot down, so I allowed it. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, good. Angela's holding her back. That flexion in the neck is rather important. Ooh, nice. <laughs> nice, Eve, let's give her, let's remove the pressure. Ever so slightly, right answer, remove the pressure. And we'll get to, look, she's licking her lips. She's not afraid. She just doesn't quite understand yet. And we probably won't get her down today, but you see that these sub-objectives are being achieved. And oh, uh, next session or the session thereafter, we'll get there and we'll show you Eve laying down and then Sadie. Okay. Sadie will probably take longer. Okay, so try to get that flexion. Good. Now I'm going to try to get the left leg up. Ah. Ah. Pulling, pulling, pressure, pressure. Next time, let's have a, a breast collar around so this can't move, yep. so we know it won't go under. Okay, I'm gonna grab it here with my right hand, see if a little more pressure. I've got tension here. Let's see if I can get that left leg up there. Good girl. Good girl. Then I release with my right hand, hold her. She's in perfect posture for laying down. If she only understood that that's what we want. And she doesn't understand it yet, it's obvious. Let's see, I, I don't, but I don't want her to move. Oops. Flag, flag, good, good. She's just being submissive now, but at a stand. And I hope we'll show you very soon, submission at a lay down. Wait, she's about to try to move. Good, she stopped, so I'm releasing the pressure and you release yours, Angela. Good girl, Eve. And then uh, let's take all of the ropes off. You want to pull it out there? And then next time, I think, because I'm not using our whole barrel, but I'm using this uh, nylon surcingle, we'll have a shorter 12-foot uh, yacht rope. Or even if it's, a, uh, if it's a nylon rope, that's fine. But it would be better to be a different color so I can tell the difference. I, what I'm holding on to. I'm going to ask her to pick up her leg. She's usually really good about that. And there you go. That's the end of our session today. We've shown you some sub-objectives being met. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com. <laughs>